Mike Blitzer here with Doug Larson and Marcus Gersey, and uh, this is the, the second video of a three-part video series. Uh, if you have not seen the first video, make sure to go check it out. Uh, we talk about the value of coaching for the box owner. Uh, today, what are we talking about, Marcus? Uh, today, we are going to be talking about how to scale your business and maintain the culture that had you thriving at the smaller size and making sure that as you build the business, you are actually able to maintain that as you grow your business. Yeah, I think some people swing too far in, in they can't swing too far in either direction, really. At first, oftentimes, if, if a box owner opens a gym, they're super passionate about fitness and all they care about is training. Mm -hmm. And then they, they completely neglect the business side, side. And then 18 months later, they're like, man, like I, I've got to figure out the business side because we are crashing and burning. It's hard to keep a staff. I can't pay for any coaches. I'm doing everything. I'm waking up at 5 in the morning. I'm staying till 8 o'clock at night. We have got to fix something. Inevitably... Some people swing too far the other way. They're like, fuck it. I'm hiring a bunch of coaches. I'm doing the business stuff and all they care is business, business, business. And then the gym becomes just kind of a regular gym. It, it's not like the cool gym that they wanted it Loses to be. The, the magic. Yeah, the culture just you know, crashes and burns. The community isn't very strong anymore. They don't, they don't know the names of their members. They don't have the, the relationships aren't, just aren't there anymore. And it's too far the other direction. You don't want to do that. You got you to gotta find that happy medium where you know, you're growing and you're, you're profitable and you have enough money to buy equipment and to, and to paint the walls and to buy toilet paper and to pay your staff well. That way you can actually have good staff members because if you can't pay your staff well, then you're going to get the bottom of the barrel talent-wise, like people that are good. They know they're good and they want to get paid. And so you have to have enough revenue to actually pay a decent salary to your coaches. And so you have to have the business side down. But along the way, you can't let your culture slide. Like You, you have to keep your culture strong because that's what makes you who you are. Yeah, yep. and I think, I think a lot of box owners have seen, I think we've all seen it, where people did do that. You know, they had a strong culture. Then they go, they swing really hard into the business side. And, and we look at them and go, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to focus on the business because I don't want to destroy my culture. So yep. that's something to, that we can, we can have it all. We can have both. And just the fact that we haven't seen a lot of people do it really well um, doesn't mean it can't be done. And we have actually seen it, it play out really well, keeping the culture and building the business at the same time. You just have to be very intentional about it. Yep, that's, that's the like dream scenario, right? You're able to hit the numbers that you want to hit. You, have, you can provide the jobs that you want to provide. You're providing the service and the experience for your clients that you want to be able to deliver. Everybody wins. And the only way you can really do that is to maintain that delicate balance as you're growing the business, right? Rather than you see so many times where someone swings in that other direction of like, okay, I'm going to go business, business, and they it's make everything super efficient. Okay, let's shorten the onboarding and let's do this and let's grow faster. And, let's, and although you may see the growth and the business actually does start to grow, what you don't realize is you've changed your recipe. Your recipe means that your life cycle and your client experience has now also changed. So what may happen, and this is really common, is that they'll start to grow and they'll grow maybe three months, six months. Now they're like, man, this is awesome. We can hire more people. Let's get some more equipment or let's expand. And the overhead and everything goes up. Responsibilities go up. You've got more bodies to deal with. Mm -hmm. But what you don't realize is that that life cycle that were before you were keeping people for a year, two years plus may now be like a three to six month deal. And so you've created the revolving door effect, mm -hmm. but you don't realize because you, in order to even facilitate the service for that many people and that kind of growth, you had to hire or expand or do the equipment deal. So your your risk goes way up. And all of a sudden you're six months in, you're thinking, man, we're crushing it. We'll be at like 250 members in no time. And next thing you know, you start having people leaving in droves because they didn't get the same kind of buy-in. They're not as bought into socially what makes your box so special. And you can find yourself in a pretty precarious position. Yeah, yeah. It, it's no fun to go from signing up with three members a month and only losing three members per month and being even to signing up 15 members a month, but now you're losing 15 members a month because your culture took a crash and people just mm -hmm. like don't feel the magic anymore and they're like, what am I doing here? Like there's a cooler gym down the street, I'll go to that gym or they just don't feel like nobody, any, anybody cares about them or they're just not getting like the level of service that they thought they were going to get. And so now you're in the same situation you were in before, but you're working way harder to be in that same situation and slightly less fun and a lot more frustrating and your staff is demotivated motivated because they see people leaving you know 15 people at a time and even though you sign up 15 more people like they see more people are leaving and so they think they're doing a bad job it's just it's it's a no-win situation for anyone in that case because you you have way more work to do and you're making the same money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you you know you, you brought up staff having the staff have the relationships with the client remember the staff is in essence your product right your coaches are the product so when your staff can't connect or they feel like they've got that constant revolving door effect, 
that's going to reflect really poorly for them because they're going to start to feel like this is becoming very surface level. This is like, it's it's very transactional for them, which is usually not why they got into it in the first place. Yeah. So you start to see your motivation and the connection from your staff start to wean out now as well. Again, you're now you're having this like revolving door effect. We're having to market much more aggressively just to keep up that 15 to 15 rather than three or three. Mm-hmm. And now you're also having to work on not just member retention, but your staffing retention is at the same time. Yeah. yeah, and I, I just used the numbers a second ago, three and three and 15 and 15, but it might not work like that either. Like if you came into this business because you love fitness and because you love training and you're not very good at business and you go full bore on the business, but you're actually not that good at business, you might go from three and three to six and 15. So right. yeah. now you doubled the amount of people coming in, but you like tripled or, or quadrupled or even more, quintupled in this case, the amount of people that are leaving. So that becomes very frustrating because you're you're working harder and harder and harder on something you're not quite as good at. And now, now you're actually doing worse than you were uh, originally because you're losing way too many people because your culture you know, is just not quite what it used to be. Yeah, and we want you to enjoy what's happening in the gym. And the people should be, your clients should be making friends with each other. That's a sign of a good tribe. It's, it's not mm-hmm. so much about following the single leader if you're the leader of the gym. It's not about everyone just following exactly what you say. It's about them forming those friendships. And you're creating an environment where those friendships can really blossom. And in a, in a certain context, you're setting the context of how that works. And if you lose that culture piece and you start just pulling in random people, like you were referring to, earlier, Marcus, if you just start pulling random people, it's going to be something you don't even like anymore. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You have, um, you know, it's, cause here's, here's the deal. You know, it's, it is possible to have a thriving business from a number standpoint and a community standpoint. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And it's, it's a better thing for everyone. You're not just your staff and you as the owner knowing, Hey, my business is healthy. I'm thriving. I'm not constantly having to worry about retention, but at the end of the day, your members are there because of the community factor. You ask you inventory with your members what the number one reason is. It'll be you know the whole coaching community thing. We talk about it all the time. Mm-hmm. And if you just if you take that factor out of it, just for the sake of being a little bit more efficient, or you know, hey, we could save a little bit more money doing it this way, it it, it will destroy that whole deal. And you're going to now have a bigger base of people who are less bought in, and they can actually pull your core members out at the same time. Right, so it kind of diffuses now your healthy core can make the whole thing unhealthy. Yeah, yeah. You always got to be thinking about the long term. So there, there's many ways someone can get a bump in revenue or, or a few new members in, in the short term. But if that's going to crush the long term, then mm-hmm. it, then it's not worth it because you can't. Exactly right. You, you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're always like trying to just like do the the short term fix, the short term fix, the short term fix over and over and over and over and over, and that's your whole game plan. Mm-hmm. It, it's very difficult to do number one, and it's just no fucking fun. So if you think about the long term, you should be running all the decisions you make through the filter of as how is this going to affect the greater system of what's going on? How's it going to affect the people here? How's it going to affect the, the relationship I have with them? How's it going to affect the, affect the relationships they have with each other? How does it affect the culture? How does it affect the community? If you're trying to make a, a good long-term decision, if you run every decision you make through that filter, yep. so if yeah. I'm going to ha- have a new sales process or a new marketing uh, campaign or, or new classes or whatever, and you run it through how's this going to affect my culture and how's this going to affect my community, then you'll, you'll come up with, with better ideas that are going to strengthen your brand and strengthen your culture rather than degrade it. Yep. Yeah. The, the trick is, 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 is that is having that filter and, and saying, okay, what is our growth strategy? What are our growth goals and running all of your sales and marketing decisions through the idea of, okay, I understand this is a relationship business first, right? Let's get that out of the way. At the end of the day, this is a relationship focused business. That's what makes boxes thrive. That's what makes us different than all the other gyms that are out there where it is much more transactional. So when you're building your strategy, you're saying, okay, let's make our annual marketing calendar and our social media strategy. And this is our newsletter um, and social calendar. And all of these factors have to play into that. How are we going to market? How are we going to launch this new program? They all need to be with that consideration of maintaining and scaling your culture up as you do it. And there are systematic ways that you can do that and hit that ultimate win-win scenario. Yeah, if you're not already, go over to barbellbusiness.com slash coaching, and I have uh, Anatomy of a Healthy Gym. It's a report I wrote, and it it takes into consideration that entire system and considering the culture and how it's all going to fit together. So if you go over there, download that report, you're really going to enjoy it, and it's going to tie in a lot of what we're talking about right now. Right, and uh, at the very beginning of this video, you mentioned that this is actually part two of a three-part series. So uh, if you haven't watched part one yet, definitely go watch part one. This is part two. Part three will be coming out in a few days. So hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in a few days.